keep staring at each other, or are you going to invite me in? Oh yes, forgive me. Do come in. Sorry, I didn't introduce myself. Blake. Sophia Blake. Mr. McPherson, I have an offer to make. Interesting for you, vital for me. an interesting offer. What exactly was it? Mr. McPherson, you've been in Paris for some time and I need your help. Only you can investigate this case. I'm ready to pay anything. Could you give me any more details about the case? At the moment, it all seems rather nebulous. You probably haven't heard about the Orfe case, Mr. McPherson. The newspapers have kept it quiet. A couple of American tourists were brutally murdered. They were my sister and her husband. I want to know the circumstances surrounding their death. These murders were committed in Paris. Do you know whereabouts in Paris? A hotel in a chic part of Paris in the 8th district. The Hotel Orphée. They arrived there about a week ago. They were found dead in their hotel bedroom. don't get it. I've never worked for you before, not here nor in New York, yet you come to me and ask me to find your sister's murderer. Why me, Miss Blake? Your reputation, Mr. McPherson. I find your nickname Spooky to be charming. I have friends who know people at the Pinkerton Agency in New York. The suspicion surrounding you is totally unfounded, naturally. You are the man I need for this investigation. Discreet, capable of seeing beyond appearances. How did they die? Are you sure they were murdered? It may just have been a terrible accident. The Whites were found decapitated in their hotel room, Mr. McPherson. Your sister and her husband, they were both American. What exactly were they doing in Paris? I was supposed to meet them in Paris. You know, Mr. McPherson, visiting Europe was my sister Ruby's childhood dream. With Mr. White, her wish came true. They were so very much in love. Are the police handling the case? If they are, it may well complicate things. Do you know the name of the inspector in charge of the investigation? The detective in charge of the investigation is named Le Brun. You know, the police are the same in every country, Mr. McPherson. Whether you're in New York or in Paris, you mustn't be in a hurry. Le Brun is no exception. I don't want to seem overly interested, but why don't we settle my fees before we go any further? This case may take you several days, 
I'll give you 500 straight away and 500 per day of successful investigation. Your offer is very reasonable. I accept. I owe you a lot, Mr. McPherson. Much more than the money I'm paying you. To be honest, I'm not sure I should take the case. Firstly, because where there's a murder, there's a murderer. Inspector Lebrun is in a better position to arrest murderers than I am. Mr. McPherson, I have no faith in the police. The 8th District Police Station, Lebrun especially, is trying to hush up the affair. All they care about is keeping their reputation as a chic area. You'd like me to begin right away. I think I have all the information I need to begin. You're sure you haven't forgotten anything? The police didn't find any items of value in the room. Yet my sister and her husband traveled very comfortably, in luxury and with old family heirlooms. It was a passion they both shared. I hope to have results quickly. I'll be in touch with you when I've made some progress in my investigation. Goodbye, Miss Blake. I ask only one thing of you. Be discreet. The police must not suspect you are involved. If you'd like to meet me... What number can I dial for you? Uh, forgive me, miss. I seem to have misplaced the number. Thanks all the same. If you want to talk to someone, you will need their number. Glad to be of service, sir. Goodbye. Suitcases are heavy. And do not forget, young man, the elevator is still out of order. Oh, brother!
Good evening, sir. Welcome to the Hotel Orphée. My name is Isidore Petit. What can I do for you? Good evening. My name is Gus McPherson. I'm a journalist for the Clairon de Paris. Could I ask you a few questions concerning the death of two American tourists? Name of White. That's it. White with a Y, not an I. Sir, you work for a vulgar little rag. Your newspaper is a, a hodgepodge of lies and innuendos. I'm sorry. I'm not employed directly by the Clairon. I'm a freelance reporter. Those newspapers could not care less about the damage they cause. Such words tarnish the reputation of our establishment. Who will want to rent that room now? Was it true what they say about the Whites? Were they really just American tourists here on a visit? That is right. Except that the Whites did not behave as tourists. They arrived on the 8th and, uh, if you will pardon the expression, left feet first on the 12th. In the intervening period, only Mr. White ventured out. And uh, ventured out is something of an overstatement. Uh, Mrs. White did not leave the room for the whole stay. Were the Whites always alone in their room? The Whites received no visitors during their stay here. They were adamant that they should not be disturbed, which is why I refused to give their number to a man who asked to see them the night before their murder. A man came to see the Whites on the night they died. Did he introduce himself? Do you know his name? Some cunning devil that was asking too many questions. Rather like you, actually. With the description you've given me, I'll be able to draw myself. I'm something of a painter, too. You are looking for a description with which you are going to produce a sketch, is that it? Well, I cannot wait to see this. The man was French, Parisian, in fact. No spectacles, no. Small, dark, rather wide eyes beneath large, thick eyebrows. Wide mouth, thin lips, a boxer's nose, solid build, a strapping lad, typical working class type. If you want any more information, contact the police directly. I'm afraid that I can do no more for you. What can I get you, sir? I would like to inquire about a couple of friends. May I help you? What's the name? White. Oh, the Whites. I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but the Whites are dead. They were found murdered in their room. An awful story. That cannot be. The Whites? Dead? Yes. Most unfortunate. Truly awful. Can I offer you a drink? I'm fine, buddy. I don't need anything. But how did this happen? They certainly were killed. It was the lady in the room next door who alerted the reception. Do you have the name of the neighbor? She's a regular at the hotel. People say she's a little eccentric. Ask at the reception desk of the Orphée. They'll be able to tell you her name. What about the employees at the Hotel Orphée? Did you know them well? The staff at the Hotel Orphée and myself do not really hang out together. 
Marek comes every now and again, but other than him, no, I don't know them. Be a good guy. Tell me in detail what you saw that night. I don't know any more than that. I know that Petit, the Hotel Orphée receptionist, was chewing the fat with Inspector Lebrun. He seemed to know quite a lot about the White case. Thank you. You're welcome. You again! Sir, I have nothing more to say to you. Sure, the front desk clerk will not like to see me going upstairs alone. Must find a ruse or persuade him to come up with me. I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the Elysee 1528? I want to speak to Sophia Blake. Right away, sir. Answer, sir. Call back later. Hello. What number can I dial for you? I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the post office, please? I'd like to send a telegram. Right away, sir. Postie Telegraph, go ahead, please. I'd like to send a telegram to New York, please. The addressee is one J. Wells of Pinkerton's National Detective Agency, number 57 Broadway. The message reads, need information on woman named Sophia Blake. Stop. I've made a note of it. It will leave this morning. Done. seen him? Yes, yes, I'm sure. Go on, Mrs. Elwa, go home. We will take care of this, I promise. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beauvais. You're so kind. 
The next time I'm at Cezanne, I'll bring you back a nice bottle of red wine. That's a promise. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Ah, a little bottle of red. Come on, next. Can I help you? You're a policeman. Um, my name is Gus McPherson. I'm an American journalist. I would like to ask you a couple of questions about the Orfe case. I do not deal with you journalist types. I understand. It's always intimidating to come up against a journalist. In any case, I'm not supposed to speak to the police either. Shall we make a little exception? Does your rag have a name? You know, it's a newspaper in New York. The News. The New York News. I have a brother-in-law who works at the news. Do you know him? Jules Quincampoix. King Campois. Y yes, yes, of course. Good old Jules. Your cousin is a nice guy. Caught. Liar. I do not have any relatives in New York. Look, anyone can make a mistake. I don't know this guy, it's true. But what does it matter? I have an article to write. I have to wire my piece to New York tomorrow morning or I'll lose my job. Come on, be a good sport. Forget it. Mm. It is baking in here, isn't it? You would not happen to have anything to drink, would you? Just one for the road. Sir? Give me a bottle of red. Promises and empty handed, huh? I do happen to have a little something for you. An amazing bottle of red wine. You cannot say no to that, officer. Don't you feel a little thirsty? Great. Here is the pen pusher giving it another go. Goodbye. Yeah, right. Goodbye.
Dr. Kaufner's office, please. It's over there, right at the end of the hall. Make sure you don't get lost. Come in. Dr. Frank Kaufner. Uh, what can I do for you, sir? I'm Gustav McPherson. I've come here to ask you a few questions about the White case. Tell me what you want to hear. So, you are investigating the incident at the Hotel Hofe. What do you do for the police? I am an associate of the Paris Police Department when needed. As a psychoanalyst and pathologist, I observe, analyze, and advise. Are these the first crimes of this nature committed in Paris? No crime has ever been committed with such passion and hatred, Mr. McPherson. What can you tell me about the scene of the crime? The police have released very few details. The man who committed this murder, and I stress the fact that he is a man, is probably quite overwhelmed at the present time. This crime was committed under the influence of a sudden impulse, without premeditation. His act is now haunting him. He is not himself. Is this the evidence found at the scene of the murder that will enable you to draw your conclusions? Sequential repetition of habits. The cure for hysterical behavior is by elimination of the source of anguish. I am just a psychoanalyst, Mr. McPherson. It is the job of the police to draw conclusions, not mine. What do you make of the traces of purple powder found on the bedroom floor? Very little. Probably a drug used by the murderer to ease the pain of his act. All that is symbolic, Mr. McPherson. The murderer himself probably doesn't even know. Like all symbols, it is up to us to interpret them. You are implying that the murderer is a victim too, Dr. Kaufner. We are all victims of the secrets of our soul, Mr. McPherson. This criminal is no exception. We are all victims of our past. And do you have a suspect, Mr. McPherson? If I had a suspect, I would not be here, Dr. Kaufner. It has been a most pleasant conversation, but unfortunately, I cannot afford you more time, Mr. McPherson. I hope I have satisfied your curiosity. I'm sorry to disturb you, miss. Can you connect me to the Elysee 1528? I want to speak to Sophia Blake. Right away, sir. There is no answer, sir. Call back later.
the studio tiny. Hoping that his break did not... Here we go again. And make sure you do not drop it, young man. Don't worry about it, Mr. Petit. Oh. This is really heavy. Talk about starting a new job on the wrong foot. Ow. Ow. Just one more step. Ooh. And there we go. Whew. It's a good thing I didn't have the Atlantic to cross. That's not the room I'm interested in. Anyway, the door is locked. Of course the door is locked. The front desk clerk is hardly likely to open it for me. I must find a way to get in. Of course the door is locked. The front desk clerk is hardly likely to open it for me. I must find a way to get in. Loiseau? Ah, oh, it's the detective. Welcome to my home, Inquisitor. Did you come into contact with the Whites? While well, they were alive, of course. If you saw them after that, it's your business. I was only their next-door neighbor. Can we talk about the night of the murder without using your clairvoyance? I did speak to the police, young man. But they did not believe me. What did you tell the police, madam? Everything I told the police came to pass. Have you read the report? And what did they say about it? Mm, that I am mad, is that it? In concrete terms, could you tell me what you really saw that night? The shadow has been cast upon them. I felt its presence. <laughs> this evil, could you describe it or is it too abstract to be nailed down? Ancient, dark, hypnotic eyes, authoritarian. I can see a color, like a ruby, like blood. And this force of evil is what caused their death? Your eyes 
have met his. He knows you exist. His anger has not been lessened by the White's death. Please, be more specific in your ramblings. Describe this evil to me. Tell me what it is like. Be on your guard. Evil is temptation. It is man's primal sin. Mrs. Loiseau, I cannot arrest a culprit based on your ravings about evil. Please be more specific. My words cannot be understood, Mr. McPherson. They can only be felt. Come back later. I need to rest. It's not the room I'm interested in. Anyway, the door is locked. Sir? Do you recognize this man? No, it's definitely not him. Looks nothing like him. The police have a suspect. I saw the inspector's report. What do you know about the man who spent the entire evening by the window? That is certainly true. He was here on the night of the murder. He stayed there alone for the whole evening. Now let me think. I saw him chatting for a while with Malay. Who is this Malay? Théo Malay. Works at the Orphée. He's a lout. And do you know where I might find this Malay? Malay hangs out at the Alambique, a bistro in the 14th district. That is where he gambles away his wages. Until what time did the man stay? Now let's see if I can remember. He arrived at around 8 p.m., took a seat by the window, and dashed off just before the storm broke, at around 11 p.m. Did you see what direction he went when he left? I don't know. You cannot see outside from in here. You'd better check at the Orphée. Petit, the receptionist, will probably know. He was on duty that night. Thank you. You're welcome. Cutie, we've not seen you in ages. Berenice, 
What a surprise. Look, I'm in a bit of a hurry. Do you know a certain Teo Malay? Uh, no. But surely the owner does. You're lucky he's in right now. You no one knows everyone you know. You're as charming as ever. Thank you, Berenice. Ah, uh, call me baby like everybody else. Right, I've got to run too, cutie. You know, work. See you soon, okay? Yes, uh, anyway, you know my address. Come up and see me sometime. Ciao. Come on, let's see that hot hand of yours. Queen and her three sisters. Oh no, are you doing it on purpose or what? Three of a kind. You beat my three aces. Right, I've had it. I'm off. Ah, uh, Ulo, you're not going now, are you? Not when I was about to relieve you of your car. Don't start, Malay. Do not think that you can get away with things just because you have settled your bar tab. Why it is McPherson? Hey, McPherson, come over here! McPherson? Who is that? Another American in Paris, who is broke. Let me introduce you. McPherson, let me introduce Théo Malay. Hi. Right, I will leave you two. I have work to do. Hi. feeling I've seen you before somewhere. Have you ever been to New York? Oh, no, Mac. I'm so absent-minded sometimes. That jacket. The Orfe. You're a doorman at the Orfe. If you are interested in the suit, I will give you a good deal. As far as I'm concerned, it is ancient history. You know all the hotels, comings and goings. It's little secrets, it's clientele. You are looking for an informer who can fill you in on what is going on at the Orfe, right? A few days ago, something happened at the Orfe. Something truly awful. As you probably know, an American couple was found dead there. Murdered. I'm reliably informed you were on duty that night. You even had a drink in the cafe next door, the Nantes, with someone suspicious. Maybe even the murderer himself. Does that mean anything to you? Find someone else. Frankly, I have nothing to say. You, you deny having met any man with a mustache at the Nantes cafe on the night of the murder. Yet you were seen there. Did I hear right? You are calling me a liar? Well, the liar bids you farewell. Good day to you, sir. Gus McPherson? Long time no see, old boy. traded in my brushes for Sherlock Holmes magnifying glass. It's a good case, Udo. A real investigation with dead bodies and everything. And here I was thinking you had turned into an honest soul.
Look, I have a small problem. There's this lock I've mislaid the key to. Would you know of a way I could open it without damaging anything? That and a few sticks of dynamite should set you up for that bank job, right? Seriously, Mac. Why would I be carrying all that stuff? Do I look like a hardware store? Yeah, too low. The whole of Paris says you're the only man who could help me in such a case. See what I mean? Your reputation is well established and far reaching. Uh, McPherson, you seem to be forgetting that I have helped you out of some tight spots. Cut me some slack here, will you? Don't worry. Just give me what I need and we'll say no more about it. No one will know a thing. No one. I will help you, but in return you have to straighten out a little something for me. A little job. Do not worry, it is nothing risky. I know you are good at this kind of thing. This painting is a reproduction and here is the real thing. Do you notice any differences? Well, Hulot, I see you're working as much as ever. Long day spent twiddling your thumbs. Running a bistro is the life of Riley, right? I'd like to see you running a bistro, Macpherson. Customers to satisfy, friends, budding talents, art critics, nosy cops, soirees to organize, exhibits to prepare. I don't even have time to work on my fresco anymore. And then there are all the other little things, a favor here and there. Fall is always like that, a little slow. You mean you have other incomes aside from the Alembic? Aren't these other sources of revenue a little risky? You know, uh, Paris is the center of the art world. Someone's got to organize all that. You're not much help, Hulot, but I understand. You don't want to reveal any secrets that may be too compromising. I know. What a surprise! Back already! Hey, I'm, I'm not trying to stir up any trouble, but do you know this Malay guy very well? He turns up occasionally here and there. I cannot tell you more than that, professional secrets and all. Spare us your convictions for once, Hulot. I need to know if this Malay is really the guy I'm looking for. He's a doorman in a chic hotel in the 8th district, the Orfei, right? Look, you have no problem communicating with people, Mac, right? Why don't you ask Malay what his job is? I don't want to get involved in all this. So there's the job done, quick as you like. Take your paintings back, Hulot. I've finished. Better check in case I've missed out any details. Hey, Mac, come on. You've hardly found any mistakes.
What a surprise! Back already! So there's the job done. Quick as you like. Take your paintings back, Udo. I've finished. Better check in case I've missed out any details. That is almost it, McPherson. What a surprise! Back already! So there's the job done. Quick as you like. Take your paintings back, Udo. I've finished. Better check in case I've missed out any details. Make sure I can still reach you. I may need you sometime soon. Goodbye, McPherson. Be careful. <laughs> 